Hi, I made Bookbinders Collator and I'd like to show you how to use it. Here's a book I made using Bookbinders Collator. It's not finished yet. It's half bound in Moroccan leather and marbled paper. It is a springback, meaning that when you open it, the spine pushes up the text block so that it can lay flat and you can write in it all the way to the margins. Um, this is a, a book that um, was the reason that I made the Bookbinders Collator application. Um, I wanted to do a journal, a diary, um, and so I had to print it out on the computer. I had to design the, the layout of the pages with the, the lines, uh, the monogram here, and the, the page numbers. In order to, to do that and print it out and fold it into signatures uh, to, to get it bound, um, I needed an application that would arrange the pages in the proper order, um, and I couldn't find one that would do that. So I made one. So first, uh, we need a document that we want to print. Um, uh, you could use Pages uh, to create it. I happened to use LibreOffice because I wanted to do um, alternating uh, uh, page numbers, page numbers on the left-hand side of the page for pages on the left, and page numbers on the right-hand side of the page for pages on the right, uh, which is something that Pages, yeah, the application, uh, can provide in its current version. But LibreOffice can. So I'm going to open up a document that I had created where I laid out the entire uh, journal or diary that, I, that uh, I'm going to bind. And it starts out with blank pages uh, for the beginning of the book. Those are for um, both for notes and because the pages in the beginning of the book tend to get the most wear. Um, so if you leave them blank, uh, there's no damage to the content of the book, the, the pages that are written on. And if you scroll down a bit, we've got the title page. And then you'll see after, this is the reverse side of the title page, and then on page one, we it started to be lined uh, and monogrammed and has page numbers um, for the journal. So you have hundreds of pages to write in get to the end, and you have, after the last page, 200, you have blank pages again, and again for the same reason, because the pages towards the end of the book tend to get the most wear, and this protects the content. So now that we have the document laid out, uh, note that the what you see here is two pages one next to another. This is the two up view you can see down here. Each page is five and a half inches um, wide and eight and a half inches tall. And this is designed to print uh, two pages on one sheet of paper that is eight and a half by 11 inches. So we're going to export this to a PDF. All of the default settings are acceptable. Keep it in the same documents folder. And it's exporting. And then we're done with LibreOffice. And we can open Bookbinders Collator. And we can open that PDF that we just created. And we get this window that shows us a layout. This is defaulted to four sheets per signature, four sheets of paper that will be folded uh, one inside the other. And it has laid it out appropriately with the page numbers, with the pages in the appropriate places. So you'll notice um, here you have a blank page uh, and page eight. And then page seven is over here, another blank. And they alternate like that. And once printed and folded, 
every for every four sheets of paper printed, you fold those four in half together, and you will get a signature that is has sequential pages. And I'll give you a, show you an example of that soon. You can also, if you like, have a different number of sheets per signature. The benefit of this option is that you can adjust for the thickness of your paper. If you have very, very thin paper and you're sewing the book together, if you do just one or two pages per signature, it's very possible that the sewing of the thread will not be secure in just two pieces of, of very thin paper that it might rip through. Um, so for a very thin, very, very thin paper, you would want more pages per signature. It pr provides strength and hold that, that thread in there without ripping. For thicker paper, you're going to want to use fewer sheets per signature. And this is because you don't need the excess strength uh, because the, the thicker paper is already strong enough. And you want to avoid the pages, the book being difficult to open. You want to keep the book opening easily and the pages laying as flat as possible when opened uh, for the convenience of the, the, the writer or the reader. So depending on how thick or thin your paper is, um, you can adjust it here. Um, so you'll see it automatically update if you went down to one sheet per signature. You'll notice after you get to the blank pages that they are, um, they've been reordered. There's a different page ordering. And that's appropriate for printing out one piece of paper, folding it in half, and doing that for each piece of paper printed, each sheet. Um, you can go all the way up to 10 and get a different layout. Um, so then you're going to have 32 pages in your, in your signature. You're going to have 10 sheets of paper. We'll stick with four because of the paper that we're using right now. And we're going to print that. Let's show details. We want the short edge binding. All of the pages, when turned, will all be the same orientation. They will all be upright. If you use the long edge binding, um, they would be upside down on every other page. So while that prints, uh, I'll show you the alternative. If, if you're not at your printer, or your printer is not set up yet, um, or you just want to save this uh, for later printing, you can save as. We'll mark it as collated so that we know the difference between this one and the original. Then you'll see the collated version, two pages per side of each sheet. And you want to save your original version as well. You don't want to overwrite it uh, in case you want to make changes. Um, keep this around so that you can generate the second one and then generate the third one again uh, if you need to, to make any changes after you've printed it out and you see whether you like it or not. So now I'll show you how we fold the signatures into a, into a book. Okay, here we have the paper. It just came out of the printer. And you can see the first page shows number one. And back number two. There's four sheets in total. And what we're going to do is... Line them up here. I have uh, an, an edge protruding from the bottom of my table here. It keeps the, the pages, uh, page edges all together, uh, so that they don't, uh, so that they're as square as possible. And we're going to take a bone folder. This is um, just a piece of bone, actually. Uh, it's very smooth, um, and it's used in in all sorts of paper crafts. Um, and we're going to fold the paper. We're folding all four sheets together and that produces a better a better crease um, and a better um, placement on the edge. If you folded each one individually you could still insert them inside each other but you'll notice that each interior one will stick out further. So now we have the very beginning of the book. Um, and now that it's folded, we can flip through it, pretend it's bound. We've got some blank pages, more blanks, and the title page. 
and then page one, and then the back of page one, we have page two, then three, and they're all in order, thanks to Bookbinders Collator. And so these, you would do this for the entire book and put all the signatures on top of each other, um, put holes into them, and sew them all together. Um, and if you look online, you can find all sorts of bookbinding tutorials on, on how to do that. Thanks for watching. Hope you like the app.